community. And because they're living together, they have a lot of times they'll get with people that share things in common with them. Um, the community I want to talk about first is the Trinity. God is a community, right? Right. One God, three persons. So would somebody like to read that verse from Genesis, read the first two verses of the Bible for us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So who's present at creation? God. God. God, right? What, who do we always associate creation with? Which person? Of the God two? the Father. Father, right. But notice in Genesis chapter 1, right off the bat, we're told the Spirit is there. And John, not you know, and coincidentally, with the Spirit's guidance, I'm sure, begins his gospel with the exact same words as Genesis 1, verse 1. And he says, who's there in the beginning? Jesus. The Word. The Word, the word is Jesus. God. Jesus. So we like to make the, the delineations, right? That the Father, he's creation. The Son, he's redemption. The Spirit, he's sanctification. But at creation, all three persons of the Godhead are there. As Jesus hangs on the cross... We know the Father is there, right? Or actually, he's there and he leaves as Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when Jesus on Easter evening meets with the disciples, he breathes on them. And what does he say? Receive the Holy, the Holy Spirit, right? He says, I will send the Spirit, the Comforter to you after I leave. But even as Jesus leaves, the last, last verse of Matthew, he says... I am with you always. So he's with us always. He sends the spirit. He's with us. So I just, I want you to understand that our God as a Trinity um, is a, is a community. Right? And sometimes we, we picture it this way, right? Mm -hmm. So who's God? It's the Trinity. Right. The father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. But we don't confuse the persons. The Father's not the Son or the Spirit. The Spirit's not the Son or the Father, right? And it's just a helpful way to, uh, to think about it. Now, uh, the word Trinity, by the way, is not in the Bible. Um, in, some, in case somebody ever challenges you with that, it's okay, all right? It's a useful word, just like the word sacrament is not in the Bible. Um, but it's a useful word for explaining what baptism and communion are all about. The word mission um, is not in the New Testament. Now, it's only in the Old Testament a couple times, and it's when Samuel's really mad at King Saul because he was sent on a mission to totally destroy everything in a battle, and he didn't do it. He kept, remember how they kept all of the good cattle and everything for themselves, so he failed in his mission. Mission, the word's not used in the New Testament, but useful words for us, um, and just like community is a very useful word for us. So. God is a community, and now, as he makes everything, would somebody read these words from the end of Genesis 1? Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So what kind of community does God create when he creates Adam and Eve? Perfect. Who, who are they made in? Who are they in community with immediately? With God, right? Uh -huh. And I mean, with creation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, He sets out of me there to rule over the fishes, the birds of the air, the livestock, all the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So I, I like this picture. You know, 
know, just, just think of this, that when God created Adam and Eve, I mean, look, at, look what it was like. How would you like to walk with God in the garden every day? Right? Yeah. How would you like to live in a place where there's no thunderstorms, there's no tornadoes, there's no earthquakes? COVID-19. Kind of like San Diego, sunny and 75 every day, you know? <laughs> and how would you like, I mean, look at the animals there. You know, there's not animals eating other animals. You can't walk in the jungle or forest or whatever. You're afraid of snakes or whatever. Well, maybe even back then they should have been afraid of snakes, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but wow, you know, community. Okay, so That's how God intended it to be forever. And all of Adam and Eve's children, perfect relationship with him, with all of nature. And then the next part of community is, so Genesis 1 lays it all out. And Genesis 2 um, takes a step back. It says, okay, let's look specifically now at how God dealt with, with man, with Adam and Eve. So um, I'll read this because I'm going to stop after the first verse. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. What do you think about that? Did God mess up? All of a sudden he says, uh-oh. You know, every day, what's God say at the end of every day, right? So evening and morning, and you know, he looks at it and what does he say? It was good. 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 All of a sudden, he's, it gets to day six, and he says, hmm, something's not good. Whose benefit is that for? Man, ours. Right, us, right. Us, right. Yeah. So we understand all the animals and, you know, and I'm sure Adam's looking around, man, there's two lions and, you know, there's two chimpanzees and two cats, don't know what I think about them. Two dogs, yeah, I like them. Um, and then the verses I left out are where God trades all the animals by Adam and has, he na has him name them. So I'm sure he's seeing all these animals all paired up and he's there by himself. And so God says, you know, for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Now somebody read those verses 22 and 23 there. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Yeah. So. Think about that. And by the way, in the Hebrew, the word for man is ish. And in Hebrew, the feminine ending is ah. So man is ish and woman is isha. Just put a feminine ending on man and you get woman. So, you know, they're meant to be together. They're meant to have that connection. She was a helpmeet for him. And, and that's how God created it. That, so now think of the community that's there, right? Adam and Eve... Uh, they're in communion and they're connected to their God, walking and talking with them every day, connected to all of nature around them, and they're connected to one another. And everything is perfect. Okay. So think about our vision statement as a congregation. What's the first part say? Connecting people to one another. Right. And then to one another. And then we go out to. Be a part of Serve the world. Yeah. Serve the world. Yeah. And and so um, that's how community is supposed to be. All right. So what happened? Sin. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, and by the way, I, I, I put some pictures of community there. Um, what's what's so important about touch? You know, look at all these so many. You know, just the closeness with others and touch. What's what's so important about that? It's been proven that babies don't do well if they're not touched. And they used to keep them in incubators and not let them be touched. The touching was so important that they didn't thrive. You have to be touched. You have to thrive. Sure. So human contact, right? It's very, very important. Um, and that's, I think, part of what is some of the angst right now is we're cut off, aren't we? We're kind of cut off from a lot of human contact. Any other thoughts on that? So, it's, 
it's right. been proven too that even for adults and especially the older, you know, blood pressure, um, all your vital signs are much better when you have that contact. Yeah. And so I'm looking today and I see all the couples and it's wonderful. And I see a revitalization of this time with families where they're having to spend more time with their kids doing things like playing games and movie nights together. But then there are a lot of people, and I know dozens who are alone. And those are the people it's very important to reach out, even though we can't touch. If you know they're there, reach out, make a phone call, send a card, which I have so appreciated from many people. Um, walk by, you know, call, call a neighbor and walk by and stand at their driveway and speak with them. <coughs> There's community, and, you know, all of that is so very important that for, for health, for mental status. Yeah. So if I were to ask you, let's see, how can I do this? I'll ask it the opposite way that I was going to say everybody that feels like you've had more community during this time say yes, but we're all. So if anybody, any of you have felt like the, the community you kind of had is um, been less right now during this, no. How do I do that? <laughs> the double neck. There's a sense in which, how to, there's a sense in which we really had more community, right? How many of you in your home have had less community, say? Me. Right? Okay, Me. Barbara, you had less community in your home. Some have had less community in their home. Okay, yeah. My mom turned 89 last week, and all four of my kids were going to get to Philadelphia. I mean, I was going to fly in Friday night and fly out right after that and come back home. Her birthday was on Saturday. But with the whole corona thing, you know, we canceled our flights. We couldn't be there. She's all by herself. And, uh, you know, it's been going on a year dump now. My dad died July 3rd, so... She's by herself. My one brother is there. He goes over. She's always been, you know, she's been going to church. She's kind of quit driving. So her elder picks her up every Sunday because he lives close to her, takes her to church. And now all of a sudden, you know, for the last six weeks, she's sitting in that house all by herself. Um, and some of you, you know, if you're single or, you know, boy, you're sitting here spending a lot more time by yourself. Those of us that are married families, how many of you have had less community time? Yes, I will. We have. Okay. We have more. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This is Rob. So we have more because our daughter Lauren had to move back here with us temporarily because she lost her job. And of course, Christopher's home homeschooling. So our community seems a little bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and all of our families with kids has been true. Of that. That's been true, right? All the kids are home, so there's more community going on. And, I, and I'm thinking, um, I some of the, the the media stuff we use, like our phones and texting and Facebook and all those things, they're way, they are ways to communicate, but they're not always helpful to, com to, to community. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess one of the things I hope as we just, we saw what community was, I mean, obviously Adam and Eve didn't have cell phones, okay? But um, <laughs> so their community was face to face all the time, wasn't it? Right? And the community yeah. they had with God was face to face as it came in the garden. I mean, they, and they were out in God's creation. They're face to face. They're, you know, cuddling up because the lion was nice and soft. That's a good pillow at night. I mean, I, you know, just that, 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 that face to face and being right there with each other. That's what community was in the Garden of Eden. How much of that community have we lost with the advance of so much technology? And in, in what ways, in what ways have we gained? Well, we've lost because my grandson, Colin, he doesn't miss anybody because he's still playing his computer games and he can listen to them on his headphones. Yeah. And kids, kids would rather text than talk to people face to face. We've had a little bit opposite with our 
with our grandkids in the hunt school, because we haven't seen them uh, since January. And Becky asked all of them, it's the first thing they want to do when this is over. She asked them if they want to go to the beach or go to the mountains or some kind of trip. And all three of them said they wanted to come home and see family. Huh. Yep. I this is Doug and Deb. And the first thing we started doing was uh, having happy hours on Friday nights. We got all the family together and FaceTiming on Friday nights. We spent an hour every Friday having happy hour with uh, the whole family on FaceTime. Uh, we hadn't done that in ever. So we actually have a little more community right now. Yeah, so it's, it's an interesting phenomenon, isn't it? In, in some ways we have more community and it's really nice. Um, I can tell you the last, last six Sundays are unlike any I've ever had in my life. Because I grew up in a family, we always went to church. I don't know if I've ever missed more than two Sundays in a row, like when I was sick as a kid or something. Never, you know. And for the last 30 some years, almost 40 years, I've been getting up about, you know, 530 every Sunday morning, <laughs> getting ready and coming to church. And now I can sleep in and I didn't watch the church service early this morning. I'm watching the late service after this Bible study. <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? We can't come together. Um, and and uh, I just, I can't wait for us to get back to that. But in the meantime, and, and this is what I want to want us to spend some time talking about, you know, how can we do community together, right? Because you don't have it like it was in the Garden of Eden. Why is it not like it was in the Garden of Eden? Sin. Yeah. God doesn't walk with us anymore. Here. So here you go, right? Satan. I like this picture of Satan because he's a snake, but he's got a face, right? He's talking to them. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he's the community destroyer. And, and, and what is it that really does rob us of community? Um, you know, chat, so everything's perfect in the first two chapters. And then we start chapter three. And Satan comes and talks to Eve. We know Adam is standing right there. So guys, you know, <laughs> we're sure not faultless in this. No, it's your fault. And I mean, when, when the snake, the serpent, when Satan talks to Eve, what does he say? Did God really say, you must not eat from any tree of garden? I emphasize that word. Why did Satan do that? What's he trying to do? Create doubt. Create doubt. Yep create doubt and so who is the one that actually points to that tree right eve right no she says no we can eat from any tree but it's that one tree right there she's probably pointing to it right right in the middle of the garden can't touch it can't eat it or we'll die and then that well and then what what what's satan doing in this temptation Being crafty. He's trying to misplace trust. Yeah. He said, Did God really say? You know? Yeah. Whoops, somehow I left out that. Did I put it in the wrong order? I left out the, that verse, right? What does he say? You will not surely die. You will become like God, knowing uh, good yes. and evil, yeah. right? And so the temptation is hey, what if God is keeping something from you? You know, they were created in the image of God, but Satan gets them to doubt that. He says, you eat this fruit and then you'll be like God. You'll know good and evil. I, do you think Adam and Eve had a concept of evil at that point? No. 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 I really don't. No. So why why would they have, right? Evil had not existed yet, correct? Exactly except in heaven right when satan rebelled against god and was kicked out of heaven true but they hadn't been in heaven so. and so here's the temptation then right three things what does the woman see the so that the fruit was good okay, it's good for food mm -hmm. second pleasing to the eye pleasing to the eye and then and gain wisdom desirable for gain for wisdom, gaining wisdom, because they wanted to be like God. Yeah, so in John's first letter, 
he comes back to the Garden of Eden and talks about this as he's telling us, you know, friendship with the world is enmity with God. You cannot be a friend with the world and be a friend with God. It, it can't work that way. And he talks about three things and he puts them this way. He says, because everything of the world, um, what was the, the cravings of sinful man, okay, there's that good for food. We have these cravings, these human cravings. For stuff. And can those kind of cravings take over? Oh, yes. For food, for pleasure, right? For, you know, laziness, you know, and all those kind of, but that can take over and become a, a, an idol. And then pleasing to the eyes, John calls it the lust of the eyes. And boy, do we have a problem with that. They're saying all the stuff that's not going through the roof right now during this time when people are, are more cut off from other community. With, with other and desirable for gaining wisdom, John calls it boasting of what he has and does. Right? We want to be in charge. You know, we want to call the shots. And I think that's the temptation that, that Satan puts before Adam and Eve. And of course, they, they, they fall for it. And, and that's why we don't have community the way we should have it. Um, anybody remember the song, I Am a Rock? <laughs> I'm an island. I'm a rock. I'm a rock. I am an island. Yeah. I'm an Beatles too. I'm an Engarfunk. All right. So yeah. Yeah. four verses. I just put the second and the fourth verse because I. So as we're talking about community now, what is that? What is that? What do those words say to you? They 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 don't want a community. They want to be by themselves. Yeah. Yeah, why? What's wrong with community? According to Gar Simon, I guess, writes the words, and Garfunkel, the, the music. What, what's the struggle he's having with, with community? What does he see as the result? It causes pain. Pain. Yeah. Pain, right? I don't want that. I mean, yeah, it might be laughter and loving, but in the end, it's not worth it. It causes pain. So what does he want to be? I he am a rock. rock. I, I am an island. island. So, <laughs> A rock, right? An island. I just mean. And here's the, this is the last verse. And this is even sadder to me. Look at those. Hiding in my room, safe within my womb. I touch no one and no one touches me. How sad, right? Just that I know the words rhyme and that's probably made him, what made him thought of it. But hiding in my room, safe within my womb. It's like if I can just go back and be in my mother's womb, there, there I'm safe. Nobody can bother me. You know, uh, that's all I need, right? I'm a rock. I'm an island. And then the song ends with, I'm a rock. A rock feels no pain. Feels no pain and an island. An island never cries. So what's, what's the, the, the gist of that song? What's he saying? He wants to be alone so he can't be hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in community, there's going to be pain, right? In community, there's going to be things that don't go well. I don't know what happened in Simon's life, if any of this is autobiographical. But don't we all have that stuff in our lives? How many of you have had a broken relationship? Me. I think everybody. We all have, right? We all have. Yeah. How many of us have, you know, just even lost somebody we love, right? Parents, grandparents. Could be sisters, brother, you know, a child. I mean, that causes pain. So would we would it be better to not have had that relationship at all? Then I wouldn't feel this pain. No, it's better to have loved and lost than never loved. Never at to all. have loved at all. Um, <laughs> thanks, to, thanks to poets, right? Yeah, <laughs> express some of those things in a way we couldn't. Yeah. So, um, so in the midst of all the the brokenness in our in, in community we realize it's still better to have that community. And even though Satan is the community destroyer, um, along comes Jesus, and he's the community restorer, right? He's the one that makes community really possible again. Uh, you know, it, not the Garden of Eden, right? Heaven. Um, but, but community, and, and, and how did that happen? There is his death on the cross. Yep, and you know, God had it set up right. So 
and we've gone through just two chapters and 15 verses. That's it in the entire Bible. And already we've had this perfect creation. Everything is so wonderful. That's been destroyed. Adam and Eve are kicked out of the garden. You know, but, but before that all happens, God has a curse against the serpent, a curse against Eve, a curse against Adam. And you know Genesis 3.15, right? That's the curse against Satan. And in the midst of that curse, he says, somebody want to read Genesis 3.15 for us? And I will... Go ahead, Barb. No, go ahead, Debbie. I read. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Therefore, since we have well, been just... Stop right there a second, oh. Debbie. Okay? Stop right there a second. So just to... Whoops. I want to go back. Well, let me go back. There we go. Just to go back. So Jesus hanging on that cross is the fulfillment of that prophecy. Um, you know, the rest of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, you know, all the Old Testament is leading up to keeping this promise. All four Gospels, you know, they are leading up to keeping this promise. God's going to send a descendant right at sea. He will crush the serpent's head. It all leads up to Jesus. And that's why we say our faith is so centered, okay? meaning Christ is at the center. Everything depends on him. He's the one that keeps that promise, makes it possible for a community to be restored. And so that, then his death is up. I love the way Paul puts it in Romans 5. Somebody want to read those verses for us? Therefore, since we have been justified by we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God demonstrates his own love for us, for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So there's God's love. You know, he, he never gave up on us. You see his love demonstrated all throughout the Old Testament in so many ways leading up to the coming of Jesus. But Jesus is the one that makes all the difference because it is his death on the cross that makes it possible for us to have community again. He restores the broken relationship between, between people and God. Um, he restores the broken relationship between people. Because remember what happened right after Adam and Eve sinned, right? As God comes walking in the garden, normally they go run and do him. What did they do? They went and hid. Run the other way. Normally... I mean, they supported each other. They had never had an argument. Everything was perfect. And now all of a sudden, when God asks Adam, hey, what is this you have done? What does Adam say? She was Eve. It was Eve. She did it. <laughs> Cast the buck. Cast the buck, right? And we're, we've all gotten really good at that ever since. Pass the buck. It's not my fault, right? I couldn't help it. My parents didn't do a good job raising me, you know, the... Um, the, the people around are tempting me to do that. And I mean, it just, you know, anything, school system let me down. I mean, you know, we, we have zillions of excuses to not take responsibility for our brokenness and for our sins. So Jesus makes it possible for forgiveness, for restoration with him, with one another. And so um, we're able to have community again. Now, the question is, how do we build that community, right? How do we build that community, again, with our God, with one another, and then uh, out there in God's world? <laughs> so we talk about this all the time, but you know, how do we have that community with God? Just you and God. How does that work? Prayer. Prayer. Absolutely. The word, reading, reading the word to know, because it, it's knowing it in your heart that you can carry it when you go out. If you, if you don't know the words that are in the Bible, the instructions have you. Then, yeah. Good. Um, um, let, me, let me ask this. How many of you have spent more time um, watching TV? during this last six weeks? 
<laughs> yep. I have. No. 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 I've had, I've watched more movies than I normally would have. I can certainly say. Oh, that. yeah, that. <laughs> I learned there's nothing on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We've we've gone to Redbox a few times. How do you have that many channels and nothing to watch? That's just <laughs> that's true. I, I don't have a streaming service, so I've been streaming YouTube. Okay. And YouTube movies, which are B movies. And one night I didn't I was tired of COVID, so I put the YouTube on and I picked this movie that was called The Patriot, which I thought was Mel Gibson. And it was Steven Seagal about a pandemic that was going to kill off the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now, I quit watching YouTube movies. <laughs> <laughs> so during the same time, um, how many of us have had at least the opportunity to really maybe spend some more time in God's word with him, to spend some more time in prayer with him? Amen. I have. Yeah. I enjoy your morning devotion. Yeah. Devotions, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'll be doing those this week. We're going to go through the book of uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians this week. Um, there's some neat stuff in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I hope if you have been spending a little bit more time in community with God now, um, I hope that you'll continue that once we get back to whatever normal is going to be and we're all busy at work and all the other things going on. Um, and, you know, Many of you that are, are working that are essential you know, really haven't had as much of a change. Um, the only, the one big change is I, I'm, I've always been surprised. I guess I shouldn't have been, but probably in the last, I don't know, five or six or eight years, especially, I, I don't think anybody eats at home in Warner Robins. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Every single restaurant is packed. And you know, I'm not saying that that's, bad but i i just I, I mean i okay i'm old enough i still remember when we went to mcdonald's it was a special treat mm -hmm. and we got our food and we took it home because you couldn't there was no place to sit in mcdonald's right <laughs> but that was a treat but we still went home and we had dinner every single night around the table right and I don't know about some of you going up, but that's where we had community in the family. Yeah. I mean, once we were in school, we had all four of us. We had to go around and say what happened in school today. <laughs> that was a requirement every night at our dinner table. <laughs> and sometimes it wasn't much fun, um, but sometimes it was. Uh, but And then we'd also talk sports around our dinner table. And I feel bad, bad for my sister because <laughs> with three boys and dad, we, there was a lot of sports talk. But you know, it was community that, that happened. And uh, you know, I, I just, that kind of community, I, I think there's value in that, right? And mm -hmm. so maybe this has been a time for us to sit back and think, wow, this is kind of nice doing this. Um, maybe we're starting to see enough of each other and we'd like to get out and see some other people now. <laughs> uh, and hopefully that'll be coming soon. But so, um, Building community and time with God, and I'll, I'll, um, let me just a couple of other verses. I love the Psalms, and so many, you know, the years ago when I was a brand new pastor, I was an associate pastor, and I was in charge of the Lutheran Young Adults of Omaha. We had like 35 or 40 LCMS churches in Omaha, and they had a Lutheran Young Adult group. So I was the pastoral, whatever, you know, counselor. So we did a retreat one time, and so I called it, uh, our, our theme was, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my tootsies. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was young adults, I was trying to be creative. But, <laughs> you know, that's, that's where our community has to start, right? With, with God's word and with him. And I love that song still, as the deer pants for streams of water. You know, that, just that idea, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God, says the psalmist. And then Augustine wrote a prayer. And, you know, he grew up, he was a profligate growing up. I mean, he was a wild kid. And um, history tells that his mom prayed for him every day, every single day. And he was out there sow sowing his wild oats. I mean, he was bad. And finally, there was a great debater back then, you know, the uh, Michael Jordans and, the, you know, the, act the famous actors and stuff and actresses. 
were the debaters. And I forget who, who it was, but one of the great church fathers came to town to debate and, and Augustine got his mom to go to it. And he, yeah, big, yeah, I'll go see it. And of course it was all about the Christian faith and Augustine, God used that moment to bring Augustine to faith. He became one of the great leaders of the Christian church. And this was his little prayer, oh Lord, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So that community we have with our God, you know, that's where it all starts. Our faith is Christocentric, Christ at the center. That means he's at the center of our lives. And to have a relationship, you have to spend time, right? In the word, in prayer. So I just, I, I just, I really, really want to encourage you all on that, okay? And then the, the way Paul puts, I, so I'm going to do, a, we're going to look at passages from Galatians, one from each chapter a day. So I'm, this is, Tuesday's verse right here, Galatians 2.20. Just, I find, find this incredible how Paul says this, right? I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Think about that. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, right? And then Paul says in 2 Corinthians, if we're in Christ, we're new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. I mean, those are incredible words when you think about it. Those are challenging words when you think about it, because how many times are we doing something, seeing something, thinking something when we wouldn't want Christ in us right that at that moment? <laughs> uh, so it's it, you know it's it's more and more uh, reading those words of Paul and you know and and talking to our God in a relationship with Him and asking Him to do the to do that to take over inside me. You know, to kick the old sinful man out so the new can be the one that's, that, that's living in this body. Okay. Um, and then how do we live together? There's a good laundry list right there, right? Um, we'll just I'll go past that. And, and then a couple more verses here from Galatians and, and how we live together. Um, and Actually, this is next Saturday. These verses are on my mind because I've been preparing these devotions. But just verse two says, carry each other's burden. Verse five says, hey, carry your own load. <laughs> Wait a minute. How does that fit? Saturday morning, you'll find out, okay? There's my, there's my carrot. <laughs> so right now, I heard somebody put it this way. We are the church deployed. <laughs> we can't all be together in God's house. But what's the church mean? What's we are the church. We are people. We talk about church as a building, and that's okay. You know, it's where we come together. But the word church in the New Testament means the people of God coming together. Okay? Right now, we are not the church together. We're the kind of the church deployed. We can't be physically together. So we're deployed. So two questions. How can we still be community in this time of the pandemic? And how can we, we be community once this time is over? What do you think? I think that I mentioned earlier, you know, the contact, the cards, the letters, the phone calls, um, the talks from the street, um, the, the doctor told me I would never be able to walk a mile. So my mission has been to prove him wrong. And I will walk a mile with my back because my back is broke. I've got a broken off bone and a bunch of stuff. So I go walking every day for, I, I'm over half mile now. And I use that time to communicate from the street with whoever's there. You know, and, and people that walk by and how are you? Are you okay? Do you need anything? And I think that's an extremely important with the technology that we have, we can still reach out. I can send letters to strangers that you have an address and you know, hey, hey neighbor at whatever. I'm your neighbor. I've met neighbors, a lady contact, uh, that I contacted last week mentioned that she had never met any of her neighbors for six months until this happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody that hasn't said anything yet. Somebody else want to chime in? <laughs> I 
I was thinking the other day that I'm uh, having more empathy for the people that are shut in and, and home by themselves. You know, I like to be out and about visiting all the time and I hate not being able to, to do that. And I was, uh, you know, thinking about my mom and just lots of these people that can't get out. This is their normal life and how much they desperately want to see us and hear from us. And so we're getting a taste of that. And so it's going to make me think a lot more about those that can't get out like we can normally. I think another way that we can uh, reach out to others is, um, you know, not always think of ourselves. We don't need 47 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> you know, we can, when we go to the store, we can kind of put away that simple desire to look out for just for ourselves and maybe even share with other people. Uh, I gave a couple of rolls of toilet paper a couple of weeks ago to my postal carrier. <laughs> and, uh, she, told me, she told me that she had time to go to the store. She was so busy working every day. And by the time she got off work, she couldn't go to the store. So uh, a lot of people that are doing that, uh, just think of others. My son Jonathan works in Chicago and it's the same thing. And he finally got to the store and there's no toilet paper and he had no toilet paper. We mailed him a roll of a package of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Probably cost a fortune to mail that. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite cartoons through this whole thing is two guys are talking to each other. One guy goes, and blam, my pastor's a televangelist. <laughs> <laughs> we have had some of our shut-ins say how much they enjoy watching the church services because they don't come to church. You know, they can't ever join us in church and they've been able to be a part of it through that. So mm -hmm. I can tell you as a staff, we're already talking about how are we gonna continue? Cause we can't, right now we have a stand, uh, uh, with a little podium up there and a tripod on it, right up, by, right up at the communion rail, you know, to, to do the filming. We're not gonna keep, we can't keep doing that. We'll have to figure out how to do cameras and stuff. Although, while we try and do that, when we do come back to church, if it's in the next month or something, we won't be ready for anything else. So you'll probably have a tripod up front with a camera on it, <laughs> filming that church service while we're all at church, because I think that's something we've got to continue doing now. You know, mm -hmm. um, people are really appreciating that. How many of you have in other places that are even watching the church service? Yeah. Didn't Tom oh, Gilford? Yeah. Tom Gilford. Didn't he film our services from back in that little, in the sound room? Right, but all we ever put out was the audio of the sermon um, for those. So now we're looking at, see, we've got, we, I think we have the licenses we now need to be able to put a worship service out. Because when you have hymns and, you know, different things like uh, that, there's all kinds of copyright laws and stuff that, we're, so we'll work on making that possible, and uh, that'll be a great way to keep that, this extra community that's developed in that, you know, to keep that going. Once all the rest of us can come back to church, we can still reach out to other people that way. We've had uh, two contributions from other parts of the country. Uh, somebody from up in Wisconsin that they wrote a check to us, and, or I'm sorry, they, they gave us a $20 bill and they took their name off of it, but they appreciated uh, in their note, they appreciated our services and because their church is kind of old school and was not doing anything and they found us online. So oh, wow. we, 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 we literally, Pastor, as you talk about our mission statement, we've been connecting to people that don't even live here in Georgia with us, so. Very good. My daughter said, Mount Calvary's finally come into the 21st century. Patrick is uh, watching from St. Augustine. So. Yeah, Megan's been watching from Fort Myers, too. And she watches St. Michael's down there. <laughs> They've gone from one to the next. So what else? What else can Oh, go ahead, John. That's right. I was just saying that, uh, that we, yeah, we finally stepped up because there are a lot of churches in the community 
that broadcast and, and they do exactly that have been doing that for a long time, you know, and, and uh, so we're, we're right, finally stepping up and I think that's a great thing. Pastor, I've got a lot of people that I used to work with that have been watching the devotions and the service because I've been sharing them when they're out there and they've really appreciated it because they don't have a church home, so they may come to our church, you never know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good outreach. Absolutely. And we've been talking about uh, maybe doing a devotion kind of thing, so this kind of pushed us into it, so we'll keep that daily devotion going. Um, that's another way for us to connect with one another. It's important. Mm -hmm. well, so once the just a couple things. So once the, the pandemic, <coughs> um, oh. we need to be thinking about, you know, what's the new normal going to be? And how, you know, we'll have some of that community back where we can come together. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to be. Um, my vicarage church was in the news last week. Um, and I found out it was fake news. Um, they were hugely criticized for having a worship service and they weren't supposed to. Um, the pastor had actually gotten permission to do it for 50 people. Um, and he actually cut it to 32 just to make sure they kept all the social distancing, did all the hygienic stuff. But the news people were there filming all through the morning. And unfortunately, I mean, I guess people, you know, 30 came in and then they left and more came in and uh, the news people were there. And I guess one of the members got upset. And as they left, as they were being filmed, flipped the bird to the photographer. Oh, So sad. Wow. But he had, but the pastor had gotten permission to do it and everything was fine. But they have gotten, he's gotten a hundred death threats. Because they had this worship that? and they shouldn't have done it. That is horrible. Now are being persecuted yeah. because they went to church. <laughs> so, you know, it's. Could never have. We don't know what the new normal is going to be. You know, when I said, hey, we want to have communion, <coughs> asked our, our mayor said, absolutely. You know, go ahead and do it. You bet. Not a problem. When I explained how we were going to do it, man, he said, you're doing better in the grocery store. That's for sure. <laughs> But we want to get back together and you know we want to do that soon and uh, hopefully it'll be i'm hoping the end and uh, in the next month you know hopefully we'll be back together but Hardly. go ahead debbie oh i no i said lord willing we'll be together again absolutely absolutely so keep doing the things you are doing to be in community now um because this is a time when Zoom, you know, is a good thing when we can still connect with each other. Yeah. This is a time when you can use your Facebook and hey, how many of you think of, I don't do Facebook, sorry, but I know we need to do it as a congregation. And now that we're putting out a, a devotion every morning, that's a good thing. How many of you on your Facebook page, maybe just put a little Bible verse for the day, stick that in the corner on your Facebook or however that works. Um, you know, uh, how many of A lot of people who do. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, you know, Pete's done something pretty good. Pete is doing driveway um, connections. He just drives <laughs> up and uh, in the driveway gets out of his car and he's talked to his junior youth, senior youth. You know, they come to the door and he talks to them from the driveway. Um, mm -hmm. you know, call people on the phone, um, send cards. I mean, we don't, we don't do much actually mailing a letter or a card anymore. You know? So those are kind of a special thing now. So think about all those kind of things. Um, and then once we get going again, our community maybe won't be hurting as, many, as much as many communities, but there's gonna be a lot of people still that have lost their jobs. Um, there are gonna be people who are in need. And so we need to continue to look at, okay, how are we gonna be community then as we get to the new normal? So um, it is 10.30. Uh, we'll, I think we'll cut it off here. Thanks everybody for your uh, participation and let's close with a prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, you're such a good and gracious God and you have created us to be in community with you and community in, with one another. And Lord Jesus, I just pray you'd be with us through the rest of this time of the pandemic. I pray Lord that uh, just through the sun being out and warmer, um, that that would help that you'd be with all the researchers and those who are trying to find therapeutics and, and vaccines 
And Lord Jesus, I pray real soon we would be ready to come back together as your family, the church, uh, in that close contact with each other once again. But in the meantime, Lord, help us to keep our community going, uh, both individually as we have that time with you, and then also with those around us and all the different ways we can come up with to do that. Lord, guide us, protect us, and be with us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. 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 Everybody. I'm just looking at all the uh, Ellen, there's Irv and Kathy. Hey, guys. There's Bill. Yep. Bye. I don't know what to do. Look at <laughs> hey, is it on space? Bye. You're the youngest one here. Bye. <laughs> there we go. Good to see you. Hey, Doc. No, no. How do I, what do I do? Have a wonderful day. <laughs> wow. That's Andrew's going to end funny. it. Okay. Yeah, I'll end it. We'll end the meeting and we'll all be off. God bless everybody. Here, buddy. Here's your, here's your call. Sorry, you were making too much noise and I didn't want to be disturbing people.